back at I'm So Euro. Here we are. Today we're going to do a review on a car that I feel like, you know, a lot of people has asked me about. It's kind of up in the air what people may feel about it. Um, but I got a guy, most of you guys probably know him on YouTube. Won't say no names till you see his face, but we're going to do his review on his car and see what he thinks about it. And then in the comments, you guys can, you know, give your opinion. But um, don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, up and coming, vlogging cars all over the tri-state area. Here we go. Car we vlogging today. M4 G82. And this car is owned by <laughs> the famous. <laughs> I'm not famous, bro. Slow Speed. I'm not famous. Slow Speed on Instagram, Slow Speed on YouTube, guys. Yeah, pretty much. So what do we got here? This is what, 2022? Uh, yeah, my 2022 BMW M4 competition. Uh, Brooklyn Gray exterior, if you're in red interior. Uh, pretty much, I mean, they're bones, I guess, stock. So what do you what do you think about the car? Like, well, uh, in terms of other cars you've had, like why the well, G80? My favorite car I ever owned was probably my, my 528, actually. My first BMW, um, because it never broke on me. This car's probably the second favorite. Like, like I'm talking about time-wise, you know. I yeah. think this car's the best one they make. But at the time where I was in life, my car was probably the favorite. This one is my close second. I, I don't even think about any of my other cars. I had an M44, uh, Mike and everything. I don't even think about it. That was a sedan, right? Yes, yeah, sedan. Nothing compa it. No comparison. Uh, my 435, I even love that car, too. But now I don't even think about it as well. So I, got the I like that a little bit more. Than which, um, one, which one would you say is faster? Between the oh, the four the four thirty five oh, and this, the four thirty five and this, it's just, <laughs> it's hard to explain because the four the four thirty five is like six hundred wheel, you know. Mm -hmm. So this car is put together a lot better, you know. You probably okay. Let me just explain it this way: I could beat this car with the four thirty five, yeah, you know, but I can't keep doing it. The four thirty five something would have broke, and blew up on it. Got gotcha. you. So, so this is pretty much way more reliable. It's just yeah, a better absolutely. put together it's car. You can get in, beat the living crap out of it, and Arc it up, go take a girl out, you know, do everything all in one. The 435 smelt like gas. You can hear the R-Triple-8s running. It would turn off on you sometimes. You, you get the point. Gotcha. You know? so, and uh, so, the, obviously, because it's a compact, it comes with the carbon fiber roof, right? Uh, I think you can get the carbon fiber roof uh, without non-comp. Comp is automatic trans uh, and bigger wheels, 19s in the front, 20s in the rear. Gotcha. Oh, and I think that might be in a little bit more horsepower. Uh, 503 for the crank. Instead of, what, like 480 or something like that. A little bit more. What power. about all these carbon fiber pieces? Oh, that's he's carbon. So we did a whole bunch of things. What you look at now is the rear spat. We did a rear diffuser. Uh, big ass side skirts, which looks super freaking crazy and hides little rock pebbles inside. <laughs> Oh shoot! Yeah, but I'm assuming it tracks the air, though. Yeah, um, you know, it's not really bolted to the chassis, so I, I, I wouldn't say it does any type of performance benefits. It just looks fucking awesome. And it comes with the canards. Yeah, there's the canards, a front lip as well. Holy, oh, is that a rock chip? Oh no, that's that was something else. Um, yeah, and we did the inlets right here, carbon oh, inlets. Nice. If I had to get one thing, it'd be this. Yeah, it just looks super dope. This front lip actually. I took this up to about 159 miles an hour and it's still on. Um, when I get the full tune on it, I'll take it up to however fast it goes and we'll see how the lift does. But pretty good. I like it. How do you feel about the front? I like the front. I'm, I've never was, a, I never hated the front, honestly. I've always liked it, you know. Uh, I tell you, like I tell everybody else in pictures, you know, they focus on the front grill. Mm -hmm. So, it looked a little big and out of proportion, but if you look at this car, especially compared to the F82, yeah. it's freaking huge. You know? It is, though. So when you look at the whole car with the grills, it doesn't look as bad because it's, it's the boat, you know? Me, personally, I, I, I don't have a problem yeah, with the front. Yeah, yeah, I think it fits the car because I feel like it's, like, it goes with the generation. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, if you compare, like, the E90 here mm -hmm. and how bigger that one is to it, but this kind of fits the front of this car. Well, you know what I like to say? This is the first BMW that you'll see it, like you know what it is coming down the road. An issue, and I, I love a bunch of different BMWs, the F82s, the E90, 92s, all of them. I love them, even E39s. You couldn't tell what it was until it got up close to you. I mean, us car enthusiasts, I can tell you wider fenders and things like that. Yeah. But 
listen, man, we're paying a ton, a crap ton of more money. And when you roll down the street, you know, that you, no one knows what it is. Like, that's th this car is, I think, the first BMW where even from all the way down there, you know, it's an F. Exactly. You know, you know, it's it an definitely F car. does. Because, like, with the E90, it's a lot more subtle. Yeah, absolutely. Say, say, like, you see a 335, because I've seen a few 335 E90s that are put down. And I'm like, wait, is that an M? Yeah. Oh, shoot. No, it's not. Yo, I got that all the time in my 435. Yeah. It's like, yo, dope M4. And I kind of felt bad telling them that it wasn't an M4. <laughs> you know, but everybody would just automatically assume. Another car, the F90, the M5, one, one of my favorite BMWs they make. Mm -hmm. However, you can come down the street with the F90 and people ask, is that a 540? And it's like it's yeah. they definitely did their thing with this yeah, one this one is like it's polarizing it's straight up like it's like a smack in the and the interior too they just went all out 100%. all 100%. out i love the seats yeah i like how they had like the the perforated like the holes in the middle yeah i don't think that even does anything to be honest with you um maybe maybe they like made it lighter also that the carbon backs is a part of the comp package or you ordered that no i ordered that so the, the seats are 3800 now the newer ones are like four grand mm-hmm uh, you just get more sport oriented seat. Obviously, cut holes in here. You have side bolster, but no lumbar or anything like that. Uh, and the whole seat's carbon. So you got carbon down here. You got carbon in what they call a, the, the ball holder or nut cup, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And you have this nice little string right here. You see it? Uh, if you pop, pop it, boom, full carbon back, which is beautiful. And I like the stitching, too. Yeah, so that's correct. Oh, shoot. Carbon. Wait a minute. This is going on by itself? Yeah, it goes up. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. I thought I'd scratch my carbon. Sorry. But yeah, this whole this looks sick. Sick. Um, so you pull the strap and the seat just moves up on its yeah, own. Yeah, it's automatic. All, all coupes do it, I think. Yeah, this, this is, is kind this of, is this is futuristic. You talking from a guy who came from an E30, so. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't have <laughs> this is a big deal to me. Damn sure. I got the wood trim, which you know I like it. Does it? Do they have carbon trim? Is it carbon? Yeah, there is a carbon trim. Uh, I I didn't. I'm not a fan of too much carbon. I'll be so real with you. Like, yeah. I don't really care too much for it. I love the seats. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm more of a subtle touch kind of guy. So it's like carbon roof, the seats, and like, you know, I don't want the dash all carbon. Believe it or not, the wood trim is actually more money mm -hmm. than the carbon. The carbon, I think, is like 900 bucks. It's like almost 1100 So when you went and got this and you said, you know what, I'm going for the M4, uh -huh. never did the M3 come across your mind? No. Wow. That's crazy. I explained to you like I explained to everybody else, right? Especially for YouTube and kind of this is my... This is the best thing I have, you mm -hmm. know, as far as car wise. A Lambo, a Porsche, a McLaren, or a whatever you want to call it, can fly down the highway. And then this can fly right in front of it, between it, or behind it. And you think. All right, so I'll, I'll explain my theory. The M4 basically blends in with supercars, is what I'm trying to say. You, know, gotcha. you see these cars going down the highway all together, a Porsche, Ferrari, whatever you want to call it flying and you're like oh holy shit those are supercars oh those are some cool supercars now if you see all those cars in an m3 flying down you go okay those are a bunch of supercars and a sedan that's why i chose the m4 gotcha you know what i mean don't get me wrong the m3 does look more aggressive because the core panel mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of room to get big if you understand what i'm saying yeah on the, the m3 and the m4 quarter panels are the same right but the M4, there's the door, and you have a whole bunch of a gradual increase to the big ass quarter panel. True. Whereas the M3, you have a three series door and an M3 quarter panel, so it doesn't. Ha it has this much space to go from three series bodies to and M3. It cuts off. So yeah. that's why it looks so aggressive, so short. You know. So I'll give it that. The M3 kind of looks more like a bulldog. Mm -hmm. The M4 is a little bit more bland. Yeah. Uh, it's moderately bland. And even worse with the F80 body. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. so much so with the F80 body because I had a 435 and people were saying sick M4 all the time. It was a, there was a few times I was I yeah. called an um, M4 and the F80 body a regular 435. Oh, it's just a 435. Oh shit, it's an M4. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, so when you went and got the M4, was there any other cars that you had in mind? Bands, yeah. Audi, and no Porsche 911. Car? Porsche 911. Porsche 911. That's a little bit of a jump. Yeah. Um. So I was a fan of the 991.2, which is 2017 and up. Mm -hmm. um, Porsche 911 Curse S because they came with turbos. You know, I didn't like the nat naturally aspirated 911s. I never cared for them ever. I know they sound good, but who cares? I wanted power. You know, I wanted to be able to turn it up. And um, I'm gonna go test drive one, 
and it didn't impress me as much as my M340 did because of how wild the wow factor of it for how much it was. It was 85 grand at the time. So I told myself, I know I'm gonna have to start turning them stuff up. Mm -hmm. I know I'm gonna have to throw big turbos in it to make it a wild Porsche, you know, mm -hmm. how, what I want. You mm -hmm. know? And it just didn't, it didn't work out for me. That car specifically had orange, I mean, yellow dials and, you know, black car, I think black on black. Uh, and every other Porsche that I could afford at the time was not a desirable model that I wanted, you know. So they offered to build me one 108. It was a brand new Porsche 992 for 108 grand plus the options that I added. And I said no, because I'm like, I can find something cheaper. Yeah. Fast forward to when I went to go pick this up, I'm still looking at Porsches and everything was through the roof. Wow. The $85,000 Porsche that I had my eye on, mm -hmm. that was clearly sold, but you know, around that price point was like 97 grand, 98 grand, which made it well, well, well over for something I didn't actually really like. And what do these usually go for? Uh, this one I paid 82 grand for. I got it for sticker. These usually go for somewhere 100 and if not over. Mm -hmm. You know, I got this for sticker. I walked out the door for paying 88 grand. And this is, in my opinion, as um, the Turbo S levels, of, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like Carrera S. This is better than that, I'd say. Um, but you know, it's a lot cheaper. So that's why I kind of went with this. Yeah, I mean, I like the car. Yeah. I drove. I never got this on tape, but there was a time that he actually. Oh yeah, yeah. When invited, I just bought it, actually yeah. invited me out yeah. on a late night yeah. to test this thing out in Mexico and. It, this thing has some balls, let me tell you. It does. It definitely does. I actually jumped back in my E90 M3 and was like, wow, what a slow car do I drive. <laughs> well, I appreciate all the cars for what they are. Yeah. And I, I would say the reason why I would call this the best car that I've ever owned in my life, actually. Um, so I'm sorry about my five series, but it mimics the E90 more than the F80 does with the power. The way it's displayed. Yeah, it's... The steering is obviously electronic, and the handling, you know, it's obviously the next level. Like, it drives for you, pretty much. Like, you can't go around bending stuff. It, it'll, it does good until you turn traction on. But the power is so progressive. Like, down low, this thing is so torqueless mm -hmm. that it grips. And then, over time, it picks up through the RPM, which, when I first jumped into this thing, it kind of confused me a little bit because my M340 had all the torque up top and it died down. So I'd be shifting at 4,500, 5,000 RPM in the M340 mm -hmm. to stay in that sweet spot of torque. Uh, whereas this car, I will hit the paddle and realize I never even hit the meat of the power band because it's like at 6,000 RPM. You know, it's way up high. Kind of like a naturally aspirated car, yeah. like the E90, yeah. you know? So I enjoy it a lot more because it's my, I don't know if I'm making a video, but it's like shower versus grower. You know, like like for dicks and shit. <laughs> like the F80 and the M340, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like very spiky. So it's like, it's like a guy, you know, he just, it's like, it doesn't grow. You know what I mean? I feel like the growers are the, this car's a grower, yeah. the E90's a grower. That, that, you know, what you see is what you get yeah. with the F80. What you see is what you get with yeah. the M340. You know, the, the other ones are just surprise you. It starts off like, okay, this is doable. And then it's like, holy shit, you know, what is this? You know, yeah. like, I know exactly Anaconda, what you mean you know? because it's like, there's a lot of cars mid range and down low that pull on me. Yeah. But when we do a rollout and we're doing triple digits, it's like, yep. wait, yo, your car is fast. I'm like, I thought it was slow. They're like, yo, you was out. I'm like, well, I had some time to stretch my legs. You know what I mean? And that's really what it is. But think, keep, keeping RPMs high in these things. Yeah, these things. What? No, what you want to say? Yeah, these things, like highway, like anything like past 120, it just doesn't back down. It yeah. just, it'll go all the way to 200 and just keep breathing. Whereas, like, other cars I own, like I had an S50 swap D30 with cams, and it, it, it with the 293 rear end, uh -huh. it moved. It like it got up top, but it just didn't have. Only came with three something. The S50. Yeah. The S50 swap because I had a swap. Like with the the eight, no, 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 no. It's the S50, so it's the E36 M3. Oh. So okay, okay, yeah, 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 with the I think yeah. I die note at the time, like full bolt on everything was like 300, but um. It, it hauled, yeah. but this thing would walk it. Yeah. It yeah. would walk it. Without doubt, without doubt. It, it would definitely walk it, you know. That's but that's how that's how the M's are supposed to be, yeah. you know, progressive. Because the idea of this, and, and I would love to take this on the track, right? The only thing I'm waiting for is the PS4S tires and mm -hmm. a set of brakes. I want those before I go on the track because I know I took my M3 Ford on the track and I was waiting for wheels and I, mean, I was waiting for tires and brakes forever, mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> and I could barely drive the car yeah. because 
I didn't have tires and brakes. And everything was like back date or like um, back ordered. And so I just want everything to get in, get in stock. I ripped this car, destroyed the brakes and tires, and then swapped them over. You know, keep enjoying that. But so you overall, you're happy with the car? Right? Oh, yeah. 100%. You would, would you recommend somebody to get this car if that's what they were looking for? A million percent. If somebody's looking for a nice car, you know, the closest thing to a 911 you can get without spending 911 money, because uh, I don't have 911 money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is the closest thing I can Neither do. Neither do I. Yeah, this, is the, this is the closest thing. And if you want a modern BMW that you love to drive, like, like I said, this is like the E90 to me. Like, it's not, it's faster, obviously, but it has that progressive, like, feel, whereas the F80, yeah, it's like, you want some donuts. All right, guys, so. There you go, man. We've seen the M4 from slow speed. It's a nice car. If anyone's looking for one, you got the facts. This guy came straight out. Like, this guy's a real owner. He actually drives this car, doesn't stay in the garage, and he's owned a lot of other cars. So, again, if you want the M4, put in the comments what you think about it. But that's going to be it for today. I'm Soyaro. Like and subscribe. Peace.